objectives of, of this war. Now, this, all, these, all this is happening at a period of, at a, at a very important juncture in, in our history. It's, it's certainly the most severe economic, political, and social crisis of the modern era. There's no question about that. Uh, it, is, it is accompanied by a major collapse in living standards all over the world, a globalization of poverty, which is not due to scarcity of resources, lack of means, precisely, precisely the opposite. It's, it's expansion through destruction. It's the displacement of, of uh, national economies, local economies, uh, through uh, deregulation, privatization, and so on. Okay? And now, if, for those of you who have followed the Iraqi privatization program, uh, which has emerged from one day to the next, I think it's very important to, to stress that. Um, everything is privatized with 100% ownership except oil, okay? Except natural resources. But that includes banking, it includes services, education, health, etc. Uh, it is no longer uh, something which is negotiated with the IMF, okay? We, we might one day feel very nostalgic um, in relation to the IMF's deadly economic medicine, which uh, was imposed on countries, negotiated and imposed on countries in a multilateral framework. We're not dealing with that. We're not dealing with the World Trade Organization. We're dealing with uh, a finance minister and a minister of trade of Iraq, which emerged from one day to the next, okay? And who then go off to Dubai to a World Bank meeting, and then the following week they're off to the OPEC meetings representing Iraq, when we know for a fact that these people are stooges of, of, of the United States, and, and, they're, and they're, they're, they're instruments of the United States military intelligence apparatus. Um, and, uh, uh, but on the other hand, the, the type of, of arrangement which is now being put in place in Iraq it's not a multilateral type of thing where you have creditors coming in with the World Bank and so on. It is a colonial structure where, it, where the, the U.S. government and the U.S. Treasury will, will, will set the stage for how the economy is going to be revamped. And in fact, it's interesting in this particular context that uh, a spokesman of, for the British Chancellor of the Exchequer, Gordon Brown, uh, actually said, well, they weren't, even, they weren't even informed of this privatization program until it was announced, okay? Which suggests that, that uh, America is not consulting its partner in the coalition, uh, which is technically uh, involved in this, in this uh, provisional... Uh, in this coalition provisional authority, the, the so-called CPA, which is the body which administers Iraq, and, uh, uh, it, it appears that Britain in this case was not, uh, was not informed. An unfolding economic crisis uh, within our own economies, which is triggered by the massive redirection of resources to the military-industrial complex and the war economy. Um, we, we can see it happening. There's a run on the dollar. Uh, we, uh, we, we can see the tremendous shift from, civilian sec from the civilian sectors into the military. The, the, the implications of this of this uh, war economy on social, on social services is likely to be absolutely devastating. Uh, we, we can see also massive budget deficits accumulating due to the, uh, to, due to the expansion of military budgets. Uh, and uh, contrary to the 1930s, because I think we have to also start comparing with other, uh, comparing this situation with that of the 1930s in Germany. Okay? This is a movement towards fascism. It's a slide towards fascism. 
It is supported on the it's milita militarization on the outside, internationally. Inside, it is the establishment of the police state uh, under the Patriot legislation. Uh, this police state apparatus is unfolding. Um, and uh, in fact, what you have is the militarization of civilian institutions. Uh, we brought out a very interesting study in the, in the magazine which has to do with the fact that in the United States they're repealing legislation which prevents the military from entering into the spheres of civilian police and justice. It's called the Posse Comitatus Act. It goes back to the Civil War. It's a very fundamental principle that the Pentagon, that the military do not intervene in in, the, in police functions or in, uh, in the judicial. And what is happening is that this legislation is being repealed and we are now seeing the militarization of civilian institutions. So that de facto we have, we have a military government in the United States, let's face it, because George W. is not the person who is pulling the strings. His understanding of foreign policy is very limited. I, uh, I don't know what the standards are in, in, at McMaster University, but I, I guess they're the same as they are at the U of O, but um, well, maybe higher. But in any event, uh, George W. would not have made uh, his uh, honors uh, BA in, in international affairs at, at any Canadian university with this kind of perspective. That's, the, the, the guy does not know where Afghanistan is, okay? And he is briefed on a daily basis by CIA Director George Tenet. We talk about political puppets. Well, we have, we have these public relations puppets. And, and quite frankly, I prefer George W. to Wesley Clark, okay? I mean, if, if I had to choose, if, if it ever came down to that, because Wesley Clark is actually a very much more astute military man which, uh, who is responsible for war crimes in the, in, in, the, in the Balkans for having ordered the destruction of civilian, civilian infrastructure, hospitals, schools. We, we have it well documented that Wesley Clark is, is a war criminal and George W. is just a puppet. Now, how does all this relate to September 11, okay? Well, it relates in a very direct way because in every political statement by the Bush administration, 9-11 is, is the justification for waging these wars. It's the, it's the war on terror. And the war on terror is part of the national security doctrine. And the war on terror, the campaign against, the military campaign against Afghanistan was decided on the evening of 9-11. On September 11, at 11 o'clock at night, they had decided to wage war on Afghanistan and the justification and the pretext was that Al-Qaeda had attacked the World Trade Center. If you go through the documents and the, and the chronology discussed in my book where I provide the a review of the meetings which were held on that, on that evening, that decision was made, was probably made several years before because you don't simply improvise the war in Afghanistan from one month to the next, okay? But let's say that the, the, it was made public uh, on September 11, or at least in the morning papers of September 12, and, it was, and, the, and, the, and the news dispatches were sent out, mythical figure of uh, Osama bin Laden. Everybody says Al-Qaeda is behind these terrorist attacks. And there's a lot of discussion as to whether Al-Qaeda is behind these terrorist attacks. I won't 
necessarily get into that. But I think what must be understood is that Al-Qaeda is not an outside enemy. Okay? Al-Qaeda is a creation of U.S. foreign policy. And is what the CIA calls an intelligence asset. The Al-Qaeda, which means the, the base, or the, the origin,